Princess Irie, and we have a really exciting event to talk about today. I know I say that a lot, but this one, a lot of people have been waiting for it ever since the first round showed up, like one or two years ago. And now we're finally having the continuation of the Fairy Bottle event. So we better get started because there is actually a lot to talk about and because I kind of want to give a good walkthrough of how to do this event since it's been so long since the older players have done it and then the newer players are probably going to be like, what the frick is happening? <laughs> so here's the event interface. Again, this is a, um, like, it, it's, there's two rounds and you can switch between one and two. The purple, darker purple suits, those are the first rounds. And then the cloud suits with the girl and the boy, that's the second round. So we're going to talk about the second round first. You can pick whichever suit you want to get first or to work on first. I just picked the girl here because I really like her. I mean, I like the male suit too, but the girl is, she's got such like great reviews on the Chinese server and everything <laughs> and she reminds me of one of the most classical literature literary figures and here are the tiers so you have to get the suit parts in a set order after you have obtained so and so many accumulative event currency and I'm going over these a couple of times because I know players always ask about which tier is which item so that was the tears. But now to the actual styling battles, this is where the confusing part kind of gets in because it's not a normal styling battle. So you see here, Momo is asking for like these attributes, right? But the trick here actually is not to get the highest score because what you want is that you will be asked to put, you, you will ha basically be judged twice for one outfit. And you don't want the score of each of those judging to be more than 10,000 points apart. So the goal is to get two scores that are really close together because that way you get the most event currency. For instance, if your scores are within those 10,000 points apart, then you get 11 e event currency as opposed to like six. So here is the first level and I am literally just wearing two items. So the trick here isn't to stack items, but to is to pick two or maybe just a few key items. And then for your skills, you don't want things that add to your score. You basically just want to defend and keep defending against your opponent. Because if you like add on to your score, that goes against the goal of trying to keep your two scores within the 10,000 points limit, right? So that's why this is one of those very rare instances where we're not using smiling, we're not using, you know, charming. <laughs> so here we are, the actual battle part. And what you're looking for here is really the um, picky from the opponent and to just shield that off so that you don't get hit and so that it won't lower your score too much. So that was the first round. Notice how I only got an A here, but it literally does not matter. It doesn't matter if you get like A or even lower as long as your next score is within that score limit of your first one. So we can see how this round turned out. I mean, I knew what happened, but still. <laughs> so you see how my two scores are 38-203 and 41-205. They are close enough. They're within 10,000 points of one another. So I triggered a clever pull me mechanism. That's what they call it. And this mechanism gives you 11 e event currency, which is the most you can get per stage. So yeah, that's kind of how you do it. And why is that mechanic called Clever Poems? Because this event is based on poems. The original name is actually Shi Jiu Nianhua, which is the era of wine and poems. And the story that it comes with is very romantic. And here I am just going through like the second stage really fast to give you an example. And if you are wondering what items to wear, so you can copy what I have on screen right now. I have to say that it doesn't work 100% of the time. It works like really well, maybe like 95%. And 
honestly, no solution is going to be working 100% of the time just because there's like your hand can twitch and then you just miss one of the skills that your opponent's throwing at you. But it doesn't matter too much because you can always quit mid-level like if you see your scores are not going the way you want them to be just hit that back button and you don't like really lose anything just just head back in you don't lose your try <laughs> so you can always do that and as for the um answers once again i will put together an answer sheet with icons and english names so you can actually search for it and it's going to take me a while so that's why i'm showing all the answers like on the screen right now but i will get that and because there's still like a few days before the event i think there's some time for me to put that together and leave it in the pinned comment and or my instagram if you want to check it out so yeah unfortunately uh, there's not that many items so you don't you know it, it won't be really too complicated for you to input into the game and hopefully you'll get the score that you are looking for. And again, just if you don't remember anything else from the video, just remember that you are not trying to get the highest score. You're trying to get the closest score. <laughs> and finally, we're back on looking at the actual items and getting some items. So um, like I said before, it's a tier event. And one thing here is that there's no like buy 10 button, so you have to click a lot. I think that's what I remember the most about this event, just how much I had to tap and how I felt like my hand was dying. <laughs> it's very similar to those underwater girl events that we had just like a while ago. And I think the coding was the same, where you see here like once you buy it, you do you get like five tries and then you have to keep buying the five tries over and over um i'm just going off a tangent now but what i wanted to say was that i think this was because there were a lot of players complaining about how they inputted an extra zero whenever we had the feature that lets you input how many tries you want to buy instead of tapping one after another but uh, too many players lost too many diamonds with those extra zeros, so I think that's why that's why they reverted back to this very basic method. And good news is that once you finish your first suit, no matter which one you picked, you get two four eight zero extra event currency. So those can be used for you to pick up the next suit. Which here, um, I picked the boy suit as the second suit. So um, I'm getting the items right now. There's also a lot of lore along with this event. That's what those, you know, full pages of text was talking about. It's a love story and it's really good. I can't guarantee it has a happy ending, but it was pretty engaging. And also um, just a reminder that these suits from the first round are still available. So if you want them, uh, you can also go back to the first part of the event and get these. But they're going to be a little more expensive because as with any reruns of the event, or not any reruns, but some reruns like happiness event, there's no free tries, so the costs may seem a little higher. Not, not a little. <laughs> it will be higher than the first time around. So if you just want one of the older suits, it's... 24 30 diamonds and if you want both of them it's 38 70 diamonds and i already made a video on this back when i still had like 243,000 diamonds <laughs> on ln so yeah check it out if you want to and now we are finally going to look at the actual suit parts so we'll start with the girl suit first because i actually like her better out of the two of them and one of the standout items is definitely the pose. It's a pose with Nikki's body turned around. And I think it's very well done here. And um, in that it's not very off-putting. Like you can see you can see a real person doing her pose. Especially in like ancient Chinese drama. And I have to go back to the literary connection with the Sue. So one reason that she was really popular on the Chinese server was that 
she reminded a lot of players of the character Lin Daiyu from the work Hong Lou Meng. And if you know anything about Chinese literature, Hong Lou Meng is like one of the four great pieces or one of the four great works of the entire Chinese literary history. So Lin Daiyu is no doubt one of like the most famous characters ever. And players started calling this suit Lin Mei Mei, which is the endearing way of referring to Lin Daiyu. If you ask me though, in terms of using the suit, I definitely use the pose and that accessory in the background the most. I thought I was going to use the hair more, but it turned out to be not that way because the shape is actually, it's very round around her head. So whenever you put on a lot of, I think, other pieces, it, it kind of makes her neck look a little bit too thin. I know I'm not showing it right now and you're just like looking at the gorgeous background piece, <laughs> but that was something that I noticed about her hair, even though I was very much looking forward to it. But I do recommend the accessories if you're very into SC and or if you didn't have a chance to get Flower Cove, you know that the recharge suit with the swing that also has similar flowers, like pink flowers with a tree. This is an event substitution for that i feel like and you don't have to pay real money for it unlike you do with a recharge suit and now the male suit so obviously i was very excited to get a male suit at all however i do have to be fair and i have to say that there are some things about it that i am not as happy as i thought i would be with for instance, the hair is really long. I guess that's not something that I'm unhappy with because you can technically use this hair with a more feminine looking makeup too if you want. But the issue with the suit is that, you know, we have so many cloud suits and in the normal pose, even though it's a guy suit, it's there's not too much surprising elements going on with it in the normal pose. I think that's why having the pose helps. But there's something else about the pose that I want to talk about too once we get back to the view mode. But I mean, he does have plenty of parts and um, the accessory he has is very fun to use too. I actually like the accessory a lot out of all of this bunch of items and he does come with his own makeup so yeah about the pose what i wanted to say was that um if we go back to it here really quick and then um, if we head into the view mode you can kind of see here right like he's very long like it's not just that he's tall it's that his body parts are elongated looking compared to the size of his head which is like the size of nikki's head which isn't that big in most cases, like unless you know, you know, make her body really small. So that always throws me off. However, like I said, this accessory is super nice because it has this night nice scenery outside of the window. So it immediately gives whatever you're trying to make like a sense of location. And uh, I'm just putting it on a black background right now and you can see like it gives off the feeling that I'm staring into like another world like it's a portal or something <laughs> um, to stretch it a little bit. And you also have the liquor jars. Right, yeah, the liquor jars are separately movable and you can do a lot of cosplays out of that. Um, so here he is with the different skin colors. So yeah, with the suit, the size of the pose really made it um, harder to style than I thought. I did make outfits for both suits, so I think we can look at them a little bit here. Let's do the pink suit first again. So I was, again, trying to use the cloud dress outside of, you know, the context of cloud. And um, I, I like it. I'm obviously biased, but... Here she is. I was trying to make, you know, a more European looking lady. And this one of mine made it to the hot list on CN. I think kind of by accident, but I'm glad that a lot of players were very encouraging on Instagram. So thank you guys. And here is one with the male suits pose. To be honest, I think um, I could have refined this a little bit. 
like I probably should have taken off that headdress but you get the idea that you kind of need a hair that's big enough to bolster the how big the pose is <laughs> how long the pose is and the issue is that a lot of the hairs we have that are really big are more like ladies hairs or they're more feminine looking traditionally speaking so personally I had a hard time putting a good hair on him but maybe you'll find something better so that's what I thought about the pose and I do think we need to encourage this type of adventurism and creativity for the game to evolve or at least that's just what I think as one person <laughs> But I do wish they made his limbs a little bit more compact, <laughs> even though he's in a more relaxing pose, but you get what I mean. And as always, thank you so much again for watching all the way here. If you could like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And if you want to follow my Instagram, I do share news all over the Nikkiverse very fast, whether it's like the newest event on the Chinese server or new developments of shiny nikki so yeah thank you again for watching and hope you all have a blast during the event and i'll see you next time